There we are given, simplify, show all workings. Whatever that you're going to do, you are supposed to show all the necessary calculations. All right, so this is a 10 mark question that we are given on question number two. Uh, like I said, all right, 2.1, we are supposed to simplify this and that is two marks. Let us quickly see how we are supposed to attempt this question. All right, so this is the first part of our question, which is 2.1, where we are given that is the cube root of this, the cube root of 27, and this is being raised to the exponent of a three. All right, so the question is, how can we simplify this? Okay, we understand the cube root of a 27 from the fact that the cube root of 27, the number that is gonna multiply itself this here means how many times, like the number that is multiplying itself, how many times, three times, a number is to multiply itself three times to give us this 27, which number? So if you know your exponents like two times two times, you know that there's no 27 from there. But if you think of three, three times three times three times, you, you think of the three, you see that on a three, there's a possibility of getting this 27. So it is actually that three to the exponent of three, remember it is a 27. If you multiply three times three times three, three times, that will be a 27. So many said the cube root of 27 is a three. So that is three, but being raised to the exponent of a three. So we are back again to the exponent. What does it mean to the exponent of three again? Guys, what does it mean? Which simply means three is multiplying itself three times, three times three times three. That again, a 27 that we had before. So this will be uh, a 27. We could also have calculated this question in this way. Remember that if there is an X, uh, if there is a number that is inside of the root sign like this, it divides the number on the exponent. So if you are given this, it means 27 to the exponent of three, this one, over this three in the root sign. That is how you remove this. You can remove that by dividing. It's another way. So that will be 27 to the exponent of three over three, that is a one, and 27 to the exponent of one is a 27. Just like that. So many ways that we could have uh, simplified this question. Simplify the square root of 16 minus nine, and that is again two marks. So they are simply subtracting, never be tempted to determine the square root of each whenever there are numbers that are adding or subtracting inside of the root sign, you subtract those numbers first. You subtract these numbers that you are given inside of the square root. There is 16 minus nine, and that is gonna give us a seven. This one is gonna give us a seven, so that's a seven. Under the square root, and what does it mean, the 7 under the square root? It means there is a 7 to the exponent of 1 over 2. Remember, you divide like this. There is a 1 there. So it's simply 7 to the exponent of 1 over 2, which is the square root. So you cannot say the square root of 16 minus the square root of 9. No, this is wrong. You cannot do that. Only thing that you can do is to subtract these two. All right? And have it as a single term, the square root to the exponent of a half. Remember that the number inside of the root is a two and here it's a one. So it's gonna be one over one over two. So that is the idea there. Seven to the exponent of one over two, there's nothing that we can do there. On question 2.3, again, we are given to simplify and this is three to the exponent of four plus uh, that is 17 to the exponent of a zero like this minus the square root of a 49. We can simplify the three to the exponent of four means this number is multiplying itself four times to the power of four. That is three times three times three times three, four times. So three times three is gonna give us a nine times a three. That is a 27 times a three. This will give us an 81. Or you can just use a calculator there that they, no one is going to even know that you've used a calculator there. It is section B. You can use a calculator. 
So this is going to give us 81. If you raise this to the exponent of 3, that's 81 plus, remembering that any number to the exponent of a 0 is a 1. So 17 to the exponent of a 0, that's a 1. You are adding minus the square root of 49, which number multiplies itself to give us a 49 because there is a 2, meaning to say the number is multiplying itself. 7 times 7, that is a 49. So meaning to say the square root of 49 is a 7. All right, let's add our numbers 81 plus 1. This is going to give us 82 minus 7. So at the end, if you subtract 82 minus 7, you are going to obtain a 75 at the end. So this is how you could have simplified this question. For how many marks? Three marks for that. So this is how this question was supposed to be done. On number 2.4, we are also given to simplify this and there is a negative one. So that is 2.4 negative one to the exponent of three plus 10 to the exponent of a two. All right. And this is plus four times a minus five. So this is a times. X is supposed to be like this. That's a times there, this one. It means you're supposed to multiply. Remember, your board mass also has to play a role. The brackets of division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So there is a multiplication, meaning to say we can multiply these two numbers. All right, there is a multiplication there. There is a multiplication. So these two numbers should be multiplied together. So as we are multiplying, let's be simplifying the other numbers. Negative 1 to the exponent of 3. Remember what I said, as long you are working with an odd number, an odd power, if there is a negative here that you are having, it is going to remain as a negative as it is. So negative 1 to the exponent of 3 is going to remain as a negative. 1 to the exponent of 3, it means 1 times 1 times 1. So that is going to be minus 1. Or simply multiply as it is, it means minus 1 is multiplying itself 3 times. Minus 1 times minus 1, that's a positive 1. Then a positive 1 times a minus 1, that will give us a minus positive, negative, that's a negative. So with this, we can simplify the other part, that is plus 10 squared. 10 squared means 10 is multiplying itself 2 times. That is 10 times a 10, which is going to give us 100. Like I said before, the, there is a product that we are having of these two numbers. So we are going to multiply 5, 4, and minus 5. So if we multiply 4 and minus 5, this is going to give us a negative 20. So there is now a plus and a minus. So that means we are going to have a minus at the end. So it's like this, minus 1 plus 100 minus a 20, which is same as minus, which is same as you can start with a positive, which is 100. So it's same as got 100 minus 1 minus 20. So 100 minus 1, that is 99. 99 minus 20, what are we going to have at the end? That will be a 79. So meaning to say at the end, this whole part was going to give us a 79. Just like that. So the laws of exponents can also be used with a situation where directed numbers also has to be applied or the board mass has to be applied or the use of your numbers also has to be applied. But know your laws of exponents. By knowing the laws of exponents, whatever comes, you can be able to simplify that. So these are the typical exam questions that you are supposed to understand. For now, till we meet again.